Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome to today's Tip Tuesday. I hope you all are having a great week. Today, we are going to talk about um, really the, oh, hold on. I've got my my phone on over here so I can double hear myself. Um, today, we're going to talk about one of the questions that I actually get asked a lot um, in this group and when I'm on prospective client calls. And that is, what is the difference between an accountant and a bookkeeper and a CPA? Those are kind of the three most common terms that people hear um, and they're wondering about. So today we're going to talk about exactly that. What is the difference between the three? Um, which one should you hire in your business? Should you hire them at all? When should you hire them? And what exactly are they going to do for you if you do hire them? So we're going to go ahead and dive in. If you are here watching live with me, let me know that you're here. I always love to know who's here with me. And as I go through, of course, let me know if you'll have any questions. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here real fast so that we can get started. And we are going to change that background. I always forget to do that. There we go. Perfect. So what is the difference between a CPA, an accountant, and a bookkeeper? Well, let's start with an accountant. We're going to go alphabetical order here. So an accountant is um, basically a professional who performs accounting functions. Duh, right? Um, well, what are accounting functions? Accounting functions are analyzing financial accounts, reviewing financial statements, and preparing tax returns. Now, I want to be clear, an accountant... Uh, not every accountant does all three of these things. And there are definitely many more tasks beyond these three that accountants can do. But these are kind of the three big buckets that accountants tend to do. Um, most accountants will have a bachelor's degree in either accounting or some kind of related field. Um, you don't have to have a, a bachelor's degree. And many accountants will have more than a bachelor's degree. So there is um, quite a range there. Now, a CPA is a certified public accountant. So they are essentially an accountant who has become licensed um, as a CPA. Now, in order to become licensed as a CPA, they must have passed rigorous testing. The CPA exam is a four-part exam that happens over a period of sometimes years. It's um, very, very challenging to pass. Um, and they also have to pass licensing requirements. So oftentimes there is a, um, a work requirement, for example, that you work for at least one year underneath another um, CPA. There are education requirements, typically a certain number of um, uh, credits you have to have in certain areas of study. There are um, oftentimes um, kind of character requirements, you know, so in terms of, you know, you can't have, it depends on the state, but you can't have, um, you know, a felony or this or that. So things like that. So in order to become licensed as a CPA, you've actually got to um, kind of check off all the boxes on the testing, the education, and those licensing requirements. Now, you become licensed as a CPA in the state in which you practice. So for example, I'm licensed in Massachusetts. It doesn't mean, however, that I can't work as an accountant in other states. So I want to be clear about that. I can certainly, like if I have, I have many clients, tax prep clients all over, um, all over the country. But there are certain functions, and I'm not going to go into this too much because it's not going to matter for y'all's businesses, but there are certain functions that you have to be licensed as a CPA to do. And so if you wanted to do those in certain states, you would need to be licensed in that state. By the way, preparing and filing tax returns is not one of them. So that's why I, as a CPA licensed in Massachusetts, can work with clients all over the country. Um, what else did I want to mention about a CPA? Uh, oh yeah, so a CPA also has continuing education requirements, much like realtors or teachers, where you've got to keep doing, um, we call it CPE. So the good thing about that is when you work with a CPA, you know that they are, um, you know, continuing their education and staying up to date on, um, like on the tax stuff and on things that are going on. So, hey, Colleen, welcome. I'm so glad you finally made it to a live. Yay, that is something to celebrate. Awesome. So that's a CPA. Now, what's a bookkeeper? So a bookkeeper is someone who prepares your financial accounts, um, including the, including ensuring that all of the transactions are documented correctly. So when we say prepares financial accounts, like what the heck does that mean? Um, a bookkeeper, for example, would be someone who would log into your um, accounting system like QuickBooks or Wave and either enter your transactions or if they get there automatically, which I recommend that they do, um, then they would go and review those transactions and make sure that they're all in there, they're categorized correctly, 
and all that looks good. Um, so bookkeeping is fairly straightforward. Essentially, it's it's a task that you do. It's you're sort of working with specific transactions, and it doesn't require really any subjectivity. Um, it doesn't require any interpretation. That's where the accountant comes in. So the bookkeeper is not doing any kind of analysis. They're just really keeping things organized. So unlike accountants, book, bookkeepers are not required to have a bachelor's degree um, or any really specialized training. So pretty much anyone can become a bookkeeper. Um, there's not an educational requirement there. So let's look at some of the more specific tasks of the three so that you can better understand exactly what they would do for you in your business. So a bookkeeper's tasks may include inputting and tracking those financial transactions like we talked about. Um, it could be preparing cash flow, profit and loss, or balance sheet reports. So again, not analyzing them, but preparing them using the data that they have. Um, they could follow up on um, uh, unpaid invoices, either from um, from people who owe you money, or they could pay outstanding bills, so uh, bills that you owe money on. They could collect and pay sales tax, um, so you know manage that process for you if you're subject to sales tax. They could also reconcile your bank statements, so looking at your bank statements and looking at what's in your accounting system and making sure that both um, uh, are the same. Uh, they could provide your tax preparer with the necessary report. So just pulling that information out of the your accounting system. And they could also monitor your budget, prepare your budget to actual. And I want to be um, clear here, again, not, not saying that they would necessarily come up with what your budget's going to be, but that if you have a budget, they would go in and add in your actual numbers to, compa to be compared to what your budgeted numbers are. So again, not really interpreting the data, but just adding the data in. And then lastly, they can process your payroll for you. So a bookkeeper can do a whole range of financial tasks in your business. Now, not every bookkeeper is going to do all of these. So some bookkeepers are gonna be more specialized in what they do. Um, it just really depends on the person that you find and what your needs are in your business. Now, an accountant's tasks, an accountant can do everything a bookkeeper does. Some accountants will do this. So some accountants will do bookkeeping. Others won't. For example, I don't do bookkeeping in my business. I'm an accountant, but that's not a task that I do. So some do it, some don't. Um, an accountant can advise you on business structure. So should you be an LLC? Should you elect C, uh, um, sorry, S corp status? Should you be a C corp? Things like that. An accountant can also advise you on the tax laws and notify you of tax law changes. So that's a particularly important one. Um, they can prepare financial projections for you. So this is where some of that kind of subjectivity comes into play. Um, and they can also prepare tax returns. Now, I also want to mention here that not every accountant does taxes. So when you become an accountant, there are different areas that you can specialize in. You can specialize in tax, which is what I did or you can specialize in audit, which is kind of like reviewing numbers of businesses, to put it very, very simply. And there are some other areas as well. So you, when you're working with an accountant, you wanna make sure that you're working with someone, if you're looking for tax help, that specifically is a tax accountant versus an auditor, um, or uh, you know someone who focuses more on business structure, things like that. Now, one question that I often get when I'm talking about accountants is, well, if I have a tax accountant, but I want um, advice on business structure or financial projections, do I need to find a different accountant? And the answer is it depends. Typically, I would say no, especially at the level that our, all of our businesses are at. Typically, your tax accountant should be able to help you um, and advise you on business structure or advise you on um, financial projections, things like that. But every accountant is different. So again, you need to talk to the accountant you already have um, to see what their scope of services are. So let's look at a little bit deeper the difference between an accountant and a CPA because this I think is um, gets is really critical and gets into some very important points here. So the first section I want to talk about is the licensing differences. So as I said before, um, you don't actually have a licensing requirement to become an accountant. Um, you, however, you do to become a CPA. So there are rigorous standards to become a CPA. You have to pass four exams that are very, very challenging. Um, you have uh, required, you're required to have work experience to become a CPA. So work experience kind of in the areas of accounting and you have ongoing um, continuing education requirements. Well, why does all of this matter? Well, it's really important because not only does it make sure that the person who you're hiring as a CPA or as an accountant is qualified to begin with because they had to pass these rigorous standards, but also that they're continuing that education. So they're continuing to stay educated and informed. It doesn't mean that accountants who are not CPAs 
are not well educated or not well informed. It's just that this, um, this licensing status helps ensure that they are. So the second area is fiduciary responsibility. Um, when you become a CPA, you are considered to have a, to be a fiduciary for your clients, meaning that you have a legal duty and power to act on behalf of them and in their best interest. So um, the rules on this for non-CPA accountants really are non-existent. And so by, by putting myself out there as a CPA and acting as your CPA, it creates this um, duty of mine to act in your best interest. So it can help protect you to the extent that I need to make decisions on your behalf. So the third area to talk about are the taxes and regulations. So both a CPA and an accountant can prepare tax returns, but only CPAs can represent clients before the IRS have audited. So if I prepare your returns and God forbid something happened, the IRS decided to audit you, which by the way, isn't that unusual. People get really freaked out about this idea of being audited. You can be audited even if you haven't done anything wrong. So I always tell my clients this, like getting audited doesn't mean I screwed up. It doesn't mean we did something wrong. It doesn't mean you're in trouble. It just means that the IRS is, is going to do a, a review, a check of your return. Um, and they and by the way, they do sort of randomly choose people to be audited. So I want to drive that point home. It doesn't mean that we did something wrong or you did something wrong. Um, but if you are audited, uh, between an accountant and a CPA, only the CPA can represent you in front of the IRS. There are other types of people like attorneys, for example, that can also represent you, but a non-CPA accountant typically cannot. And then the last um, sort of difference here is a code of ethics. So CPAs um, commit to a very strict code of ethics when we become CPAs and when we renew our licenses. And these, um, this code of ethics is really designed to protect you. And so I think working with a CPA is a really great idea for, over just a non-CPA accountant because you know that this is a person who has committed to this code of ethics and that there is, in fact, by the way, a review board and a process of consequences if they break this code of ethics. So it just gives you sort of that extra um, layer of um, uh, sort of relief or, or confidence that the person working for you is, in fact, going to represent your best interests. So. The question I always get is, well, when should I hire these people? So let's look at each one. Well, when should I hire a bookkeeper? So I typically suggest that you hire a bookkeeper when you want someone else to oversee the daily transactions reporting in your business. So this is adding in those transactions from your bank account, or if they are automatically getting synced, it's making sure that they're correct. Um, it's doing that monthly reconciliation. So checking your bank statements to what's in your accounting system. And just generally having someone to handle financial tasks in your business, like payroll, like invoicing that you don't want to do yourself. So bringing on a keeper when you feel like you've got enough of that stuff going on that it makes sense to get it off your plate and onto someone else's. Well, when should you hire an accountant or a CPA? So I recommend hiring an accountant or a CPA when you want someone to pre prepare your tax returns or advise you on tax matters. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into this because a question I often get is, well, I don't wanna do my own taxes, but I'm very early in my business. I don't have a lot of money. You know, There's not much going on. Should I do my own taxes? They're, they seem pretty easy. Should I just do them myself? And the bottom line that I always tell folks is this. It's always better to have someone who knows what they're doing, who like this is their specialty, do something for you, right? Whether that's taxes or it's building a website or it's, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what other <laughs> things, you know, doing your social media, whatever, right? It's always better to have somebody who, who does this professionally as their specialty. But the decision that you have to make as a business owner is what risk are you taking on doing it yourself? What are the potential consequences? And what, uh, what is the value that you gain if you have someone else do it and does that offset the cost? So for example, when it comes to doing your taxes, the questions that you would want to think about are, if I do my own taxes, what are the potential consequences if I mess something up? What is the likelihood I'm going to mess something up? The simpler your business, the simpler your financial situation, the less likely you're going to mess something up, right? The more you have going on, the more likely something's going to get missed. Um, I have a lot of clients this year who signed up because they said that 2020 was a particularly challenging year in the sense that there are a lot of tax law changes. There are a lot of uh, new credits because of COVID. There are a lot of um, 
new benefits and, and rules because of COVID. And so even though they've done their taxes on their own in the past, they felt like 2020 was the year to bring someone and help them and kind of navigate all of that complexity. I think that's a great example of when you'd want to bring someone in. So ultimately, it's up to you as the business owner to decide, you know, is the risk of me doing it myself kind of worth it? Is it, is it low enough? Uh, you know, either the consequences are low enough or the likelihood of something going wrong is low enough that it's worth me just doing them. And then the second piece of that, as I mentioned before, is, well, what are the, what's the value of the benefits you'll get if you hire someone and do those, does that value outweigh the cost? So for example, if you're spending 20 hours in April doing your taxes, well, what's the value of that 20 hours if you could get that 20 hours back? So if someone else took care of your taxes for you and you got those 20 hours back, could you bring on five new clients? Could you sell 50 more courses, you know, whatever it may be. And so what is the value of that time that you end up getting back? Um, and you want to just think not, not just about when you file the actual tax return, but throughout the year. And what are some of those other tasks? For example, your quarterly estimated tax calculations, which you're supposed to be doing four times a year. So think about those. Think about... Um, any time that maybe you spend Googling tax questions that you might have or trying to figure out, you know, how to deduct something and, and factor that in. So just thinking about kind of that whole picture and what's the value you're going to get and does that outweigh the cost of hiring somebody. Now, look, I'm I'm not against people doing their own taxes. It's just ultimately going to be up to you to weigh those two main considerations and make a decision about whether or not it makes sense for you at this point to bring someone on. But I don't think it's ever a bad idea to hire somebody who specializes in this. You just got to think about whether or not it's the right um, thing for you to do at this point in your business. So hopefully that makes sense. Happy to answer more specific questions if folks want. Um, but you're never going to have, you're never going to find me advise against bringing on a CPI. It's just a question of, um, does this feel like the right thing for you to do in your business at this point? So with that, I'm going to leave it there um, and uh, let you all know or remind you all that I do offer tax prep services. Um, you can learn more by, I don't know why that slide is messed up, but you can learn more by going to megkwheeler.com forward slash tax. Um, I have basically two packages. I have just a tax prep only package, kind of the done and dirty. Let's, let's get it out the door. And then I have an ongoing support package, which includes your tax um, return preparation, but it also includes doing your quarterly estimated tax payments. Um, it includes quarterly check-in calls with me. It includes ongoing access to me to ask me questions whenever you want. This is what folks have told me is by far the most value for them because with most accountants or CPAs, they end up charging you to ask them a question. That's not the case with me. When you sign up for my ongoing support package, you get access to me um, year round, in fact, through next April, um, April 30th, 2022, to ask me questions whenever they come up. So without paying, another dime. Um, so that's what you get with my ongoing support package. So again, you can learn more by going to megkwheeler.com forward slash tax. I'll stay on for just a couple more seconds in case folks have any questions. But otherwise, just a reminder that I will be live here on Thursday in the Badass Moneymakers free Facebook group uh, for our weekly Q&A. And I'll be back here again next Tuesday for another Tip Tuesday. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope everyone has a fabulous week. And I hope to see you on uh, Thursday. Bye for now.